Mad Vlad is likely to use nukes, we have to stop him. Rather incredibly, it is now commonplace for Vladimir Putin and his sick Kremlin sock puppets to raise the prospect of nuclear war. Mad Vlad constantly threatens the free world with nuclear Armageddon. So does his hatchet-faced foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. So does every little propaganda-puking TV presenter on Russian state TV. They all seem to positively relish the idea of nuclear destruction. It was nothing like this during the Cold War when the prospect of the world being destroyed by nuclear bombs was too horrific to be the stuff of idle threats, even from Russian dictators and their goons. No longer. Russia's mindlessly macho nuclear rhetoric pushes us closer to World War III than we have been since the mushroom clouds rose above Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. These days are also more dangerous than the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev and America's John F. Kennedy were both sane, rational leaders who ultimately recoiled in horror at the thought of nuclear war. Putin is neither sane nor rational. The last time this country was threatened with weapons of mass destruction, they turned out to be a figment of Tony Blair's overexcited imagination. But this time the WMDs are horrifically real. And when Putin repeatedly threatens the West with his nukes, we would be stark raving insane not to take him very seriously indeed. If someone intends to interfere in what is going on from the outside, they must know that constitutes an unacceptable threat to Russia, the increasingly twitchy Putin raved this week in St. Petersburg. They must know our response to counter-strikes will be lightning fast. We have the weapons we need for this. No one else can brag about these weapons and we won't brag about them but we will use them. The weapon on Putin's twisted mind appears to be the Sarmat missile that rogue state Russia launched last week. This missile can fly 11,000 miles, packs 15 warheads and has the potential to annihilate an area the size of France, one Sarmat means minus one Great Britain, snickered Russian TV presenter and Putin puppet Vladimir Solovyov. As Putin's Red Army rabble of rapists, looters and murderers gets bogged down in Ukraine, fought to an exhausted standstill by the heroic Ukrainians, the potential for some kind of nuclear strike only increases. There can be no peace for the world while Putin boasts about wiping us from the face of the earth. Ultimately, Blair's big fat fibs about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction were not a valid reason to invade Iraq. But the brutal reality of Putin's nuclear arsenal, and Russia's increasingly belligerent threats means we have no choice but to face down the first deranged tyrant in human history to have nuclear weapons. Seemingly sick in both body and mind, this deluded dictator is desperate to declare a great victory to the hopelessly gullible Russian masses. The rest of the world can see that Putin has scored an historic own goal. He has been wrong about everything. His invasion has failed. His army is revealed as a second rate rabble. He has turned Russia into a pariah state that will be despised for generations. Yet tragically, this all makes it more likely that Putin will use nukes before this war is over. Putin's nuclear blackmail does not mean we should cower and cringe and appease this nuclear nut job. It means we must do more. Whatever it takes to consign this tyrant to the knacker's yard of history. We will never prevent nuclear war by appeasing Putin. We will only avert it by ending the mad, murdering bastard. Rwanda, I strongly suspect, is not the answer to the naughty problem of illegal immigration. It's true there have been no illegal migrants on the south coast since the Rwanda ruse was floated. But that seems to have more to do with high winds on the English Channel than the prospect of ending up in Central Africa when you thought you were bound for Kent. The only long-term solution is smashing the people trafficking cartels to smithereens so they never again ply their evil trade on our seas. And that should not be beyond the capabilities of two great nations, like the UK and France. Gensha, welcome to the World Trending News. If you want to more update regarding around the World Trending News, then subscribe our channel and press the bell icon and share with your friend and family. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you.